Da, 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 the Bake Bake Down. Welcome to the Bake Down Podcast, where we discuss hot takes on hot bakes. And today we're going to be looking at cakes through the decades and so popular exciting. cake trends, how cakes have changed over the years. I love it. I've prepared for you a Google Slides presentation. I love a good <laughs> presentation. And we'll look at the Google Slides presentation first. <laughs> I can't show that slide on here. <laughs> it's my title slide. Okay, so not all of this information is going to be 100% accurate. Okay. Okay. So, the Barbie cake, the Barbie dress cake. How do you feel about this cake? I have a lot of feelings about Barbie cakes. Uh huh. I think when I was a little girl, I wanted Barbie cakes. Like, I really, really wanted a Barbie cake. But I also felt like when I was little, I really wanted cakes with toys on them. Like, if really? you got cakes with toys on them, that was the ultimate. Like, you had really hit it with getting that. So I feel like this was the ultimate. Because it wasn't just, like, a little toy, you know, that you had on top and you would lose it. You'd get a full Barbie in there. True. Although, didn't they also have those Barbie picks where it was just like the top half of the Barbie? They did. But in my, I don't know, five year old mind, I assumed <laughs> that the Barbie went all the way down to the bottom of the cake. Because I remember my mom buying one of these kits and it did come with just like the little pick Barbie. And I remember her making me one where she made it look like she had a mermaid tail mm -hmm. going down the side. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever at the time when I was like, five <laughs> i mean i i also think that these cakes make cake decorating accessible to lots of people mm -hmm. and it it can look really really good with very little effort mm. so i do like it for that reason yeah but would i ever order this cake from like a custom bakery no I don't think we would order any of these cakes because we could just make them ourselves. Okay. I'm thinking about like if I just were a customer though. Because ah. I would in my <laughs> mind be like, oh, I could probably do that myself. Yeah. And I, I kind of think that that was the point of these types of cakes. Of this one? Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it goes back as far as 1914. I can't either. <laughs> but it makes sense. They had dolls, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they had cake. Yeah. There was like a whole history behind it. It would be really interesting to see how they did it, though, because now we have actual cake pans, actually, that only came out within the last few years, I would say, where mm -hmm. you bake it up specifically for that. Right. Well, even at, like, one of my jobs, we did have one of those pans, but it just would never work out because not all Barbies were the same. Yes. Some are bigger, some are so smaller. So you have to end up carving anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we would end up just doing two eight-inch cakes with a six-inch dome on top, and they would just carve it. Yeah, that and makes sense. And it would sense. look much better. Yeah. But yeah, so there's the Barbie cake. Then we have ice cream cake, which I asked my sister yesterday when I was putting this together. I was like, think of cakes from our childhood growing up. What do you remember? And she's like, I just remember everyone having ice cream cakes. Yes. And I was like, oh. Okay. And apparently one of the first ice cream cakes or like when they started becoming popular was in 1970 with this fudgy the whale cake. <laughs> Interesting. Now yeah. I'm wondering if obviously the ice cream cake trend started because <clears throat> the invention of refrigerators and freezers mm -hmm. were uh, only a little bit behind that. Mm -hmm. So because it, it, before that they didn't really have like large capacity <clears throat> freezers and fridges. So mm -hmm. that makes sense. I love ice cream cake yeah like to actually eat i love a good dairy queen ice cream cake i do like dairy queen ice cream cakes but i really only like the you know the chocolatey crumble you only part. like the fudge part in the middle yeah really like yeah. i like the ice cream too obviously but like ice cream's not my absolute favorite dessert ever i really love ice cream mm. all year round i will pick ice cream over like creme brulee though your hate for creme brulee <laughs> really gets me because every time I make Italian meringue buttercream or anything that uses up egg whites, that's how I use up my egg yolks. Creme brulee. Sorry, I hate it. <laughs> it's too custardy, too eggy. I am not a fan of custard, so I can get on board with that. But mm -hmm. creme brulee is different. Not in my opinion. <laughs> 
the, the thing with ice cream cakes is love the taste. Never do I like the look. Mm. The look always looks the same. Even like when I grocery s- store. Yeah. And yeah. even when I've seen ice cream cakes be made a little bit fancier, it I guess to me it's like, does it even matter how fancy it looks? Because before you know it, it's gonna be melting, so you have to put it away. That's true. Have you ever it tried making your ice cream cake? I've made an ice cream cake. I haven't. But it's it was so simple. Like it was just like you put it in the mold and then Oh yeah, that's take so it true. Out. I, I feel like I've even seen those TikToks of, like, Dairy Queen workers making yeah. the ice cream cakes. And they're like, this is how we do it. And it just comes out of, like, a yeah. machine. And they Oh, just, I don't have a machine like that. But, yeah. Yeah, but, like, the ice cream just comes out of the machine and they just put it into mm-hmm. a cake ring. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> to me, it, it's it's simple, but you can never go far with it. Hmm. Was definitely popular when I was growing up, though. Like, yeah. everyone had an ice cream cake for their birthday. For sure. <laughs> I love the ice cream cakes, too, that have cake in them plus the ice cream mm. um which was was also popular my sister had a lot of those for her birthday i haven't eaten one of those in so long i haven't had one in so long yeah. like those type and then we have the funfetti cake which is vanilla cake with sprinkles baked into it which was started in 1989 by pillsbury how do you feel about funfetti cake? Do you feel like it's really that special? No. <laughs> Here's what I think about it. I, I've i made funfetti cake lots of times, mm-hmm. especially on my channel, because you know why? It makes it look a little bit different than vanilla cake mm-hmm. by just throwing in some sprinkles in there. Yeah. And I always use up the sprinkles that are just a little too far gone to decorate with uh-huh. because once you bake it through, you know how like, old sprinkles get that play-doh-y yes. kind of smell when Ew, they're too so far gross. gone. Yeah. When you put it into a Funfetti cake, you naturally bake out all of those things and you can't even taste it anymore. Ah. So that's the way I use up Smart. leftover like quins and things like that. I've never thought it was that great. I was just like, eh, why am I putting extra I know. sugar into this cake? I know. Cake? Extra sugar and doesn't really do much. You don't maintain the crunch inside yeah. of the cake. It just looks fun. Yeah. It looks better than plain old boring yeah. vanilla cake. But but my sister loves Funfetti. Requests Funfetti for everything. Really? Yes. And you're too young for this, but Mike the Situation on the Jersey Shore also loves Funfetti <laughs> cake. Who is that? <laughs> okay then sometime in the 2000s that's when cupcakes became popular and started becoming gourmet yes uh and also pull apart cupcake cakes became a thing and i actually remember having a pull apart cupcake cake for one of my birthdays when i was like me too eight maybe and it was like a big rainbow it was like all covered in like that gross grocery store yes that always like, looks fantastic. I do I have to say, it, they, looks it was like great. an airbrushed rainbow over yes. top of the buttercream. Right? I I too got this airbrushed Disney princess one, <laughs> and it had all the different Disney princesses on I it. I love that. But making those, ugh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a pain. They're a pain. It also is a lot of unnecessary frosting. Yeah. Because the frosting goes into the divots of the cupcakes because yeah. you can't get you can only get your cupcakes so close together. Yeah. So and I always feel like whenever I watch the process of the pull apart cupcake cake being made, it always looks like wow, like something really cool is going to happen and it never does. Yeah. Like even though they've done a fantastic job, it's it's scraped nice and flat so it's like all these cupcakes turn into a guitar and you think it's going to be amazing. Uh-huh. But it always just looks like a, it's just eh. yeah, it's just eh, a little lackluster. It's like, "Oh, yeah, that is a guitar." Yeah, but it's not like, "Whoa. No. Oh my god." And it's because of the limitations. Right? Like, buttercream can only do so much in that capacity. Yeah, and you can't really cakes. use fondant because you're going to pull it apart after. Exactly. Exactly. Like, but I do think that the utilitarian purpose of it is really great. Like, mm-hmm. especially with children. Yeah, right? it's like it's like a pre-cut cake, basically. Yeah, because like pre-cut cake. Cupcakes are the mini version of a cake, but then you just put a bunch of them together to make a cake. Yes. But yeah, that's the point. It's already pre-cut basically yes exactly oh cupcakes <laughs> um but i have a little story about the cupcake trend oh 
So, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to keep things pretty anonymous because it, it will, I don't know, there could be like legal things with it, but legal. Yes. So oh. there was this cupcake company that was pretty big here, but I don't know if they were a cupcake company that was all over the world or if it was a Canadian cupcake company or mm-hmm. what, but there's this cupcake company and their cupcakes always looked like this, like really beautiful, um, lots of different flavors. And on my way to university, there was this cupcake store. Uh huh. So I, I always passed by it and I was like, oh, that would be really, really cool to try one one day. But they were like four or five bucks a cupcake. Oh my gosh. I know. Back like, then? I know. They're pretty big though. Okay. So I was like, and it was, it's Vancouver. So I just feel like things are more expensive. Right. So I, <clears throat> I went and I got one and I was like, oh, these are like subpar, whatever. So <laughs> I totally forget about these cupcakes. I see it every day as I pass by. And then there was, it was a chain. So there was like a few of them. Yeah. And so this chain had very particular color scheme and it was very, very different from this other big chain um, that was way more like girly and everything. And then this one was just a little bit more muted. Okay. But it was very, the branding was very obvious. Okay. So fast forward like a few years later and I go and I um, am looking at this other place and I was like, oh, you know, this place seems really familiar. And I, and I'm like, was this place by any chance this other place before? Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and they're just like, actually, um, it was a big scramble to turn this new place from that old place. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, why did you do that? Why did you just like leave it? I don't know. I don't understand franchises and stuff like that. Yeah. And it turns out the owner of that company ran away with all of the funds from the company. So I, I'm assuming like when you own a, an entire franchise, there's like, <clears throat> there are different ways of owning it. Uh-huh. So I guess that the owner of this place like still owed different franchises money and certain things like that. Uh huh. And they just ran off one day. <laughs> so I... I guess the franchise owners, like the ones that were completely innocent, that just owned their own individual shop. Yeah. You either had to just make it work Uh or just (laughs) let it go. Wow. I know. That's wild. And and (laughs) cupcakes were still... the, The crazy thing was, during this entire time, cupcakes were still booming. Cupcakes were still really incredibly popular. Yeah. So... I don't know why the owner of that company just decided to run off. Yeah. That and doesn't seem smart. I know. And this is all hearsay. It's not like I've researched this, but this was from one of the owners of these places, these wow. establishments that was like, that's what happened. That's wow. why this is where I am kind of thing. Uh-huh. The and I just... Cupcake scandal. I know. And I was <laughs> like, when I heard about it, and I was like, wow. <clears throat> and you just decided to keep going Mm -hmm. and they were like yeah even though there was nothing like i guess that particular franchise it was kind of just like they they, there was no ovens there was no like actual baking of anything they just brought it in okay and then or like maybe they used a mix or something like that so it was like no thinking Uh when you're running the place and then all of a sudden you had to like do everything yeah yeah wow that's crazy yeah were the cupcakes like since they were so expensive, were they like just as simple as these ones or were they more fancy like those ones? I guess they were slightly more fancier, mm-hmm. but it depended what flavor you got. Because I wonder how fast cupcakes went from like that to that to like as custom as they can be now. I feel like it took a little while mm-hmm. for them to get to that. Like I feel like the mm-hmm. picture with like the strawberry and all of the chocolate bars and stuff on top, it took a little while to get there. Mm-hmm. Probably about the same amount of time as it took for cakes to get fancier, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We have just some cake pictures from, you know, the, the 2000s. me back. <laughs> I looked up 
cakes from the 2000s and they were all like this the dark neon everything's popping out at you yeah (laughs) oh it was such a fun time but also just like it took me back to to like the neon trend yes and like those specific things would just be trending in general yep like everywhere yeah and you'd find clothes birthday parties cakes like all the things yes (sighs) ah Those pop-out stars give me a little PTSD. <laughs> just like having to make so many of those uh, pop-out stars. Yeah. And if you ran out of like the gauged wire that you needed, it was just a disaster. And and you could never do those things last either. Like if uh-huh. you were rushing to get a cake done, you could never do the pop-out stars at the last minute because you needed them to dry right. together. Also, these all, like, three out of four of these pictures have the rounded edge, too. I know. Just the work was not as... The rounded edge is, like, why? (laughs) But, again, I guess that's just a preference thing, right? Like, where did we come up with a rounded edge isn't okay? True. Like... I guess everyone just wanted to start having those sharp edges. Yes. Because it looked more put together. I also feel like there were a lot of... And not to say that this isn't still part of, like, custom cake trends or when you see, like, really um, crazy, well-done cakes that there's a lot of detail. But Mm -hmm. I do feel like everybody for a long time wanted to fit everything that was about them onto a cake. Like, I like shopping, so I want a shopping bag here. Oh, and I like makeup, so please put, like, blush here. and A lipstick. Exactly. So it was like they are trying to fit their entire identity onto a cake cake, Mm -hmm. and you end up with these cakes that don't look cohesive (laughs) and they're also a ton of work too yeah and I do feel like there's a lot of artistry that goes into it like that guitar alone probably takes a really long time Mm -hmm. to get that but definitely but do I think that that looks like the best usage of those skills personally no but like (laughs) That's just me. That's it's not the work of that person. That's not done uh-huh. well. It's just I think that when we're putting that much effort into something, you want it to look spectacular at the end, right? I think because of that too, a lot of these cakes there weren't like as many cake trends like how now we have like the unicorn cake and yes. the geode cake and stuff yes. like that. It's because like there weren't cake trends. It was just people putting their own personality on a cake. So you'd see the cake and be like, "Wow, that's so cool," but like. Just certain elements would become cake trends. Like exactly. Like the, the stars, for example. Exactly. Or if it was a trend, it was like something like the neon trend. Or yes. the mustache trend. Remember the mustache oh, trend? Oh, the mustache trend. <laughs> Why? Like stuff like that. But like we all bought into it. It was all like, yeah, let's put mustaches on everything. I used to have mustache pajamas when I was little. <laughs> okay. Now, 2008, we have the rise of cake pops. <laughs> My mom actually had this book. Can I just say how iconic the cupcake cake pops are? I know. I remember seeing that particular picture. I think it's from Martha Stewart so many times. <laughs> like I've seen that and that combo. I don't know. I This one says a Bakerella, but yeah. I've honestly seen that picture so many times. Really? Yeah. This marketed in different picture? ways. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Bakerella was the person who invented them. And then she wrote a book. Wow. Why don't we give more credit to Bakerella? Like, it's hard to give credit to the first person that created cake. Yeah. But let's give credit to Bakerella. Well, when you look up who invented cake pops, it's her everywhere. I remember flipping through that book and being like, wow. And she was just trying to figure out a way to use up her scrap cake. And then she, like, posted it or something. And then and then it blew was up. Like, oh, my God. And now they're, like, a Starbucks thing. And Everyone now it's knows a staple. Yeah. And you know what's weird, though? I remember looking up recipes. I used to always look at Martha Stewart's website mm-hmm. in university, I remember. I would have, like, huge long breaks between classes. So I would just scroll through for, like, inspiration yeah. um, for baking. And the amount of times I saw them trying to push this cake pop thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ew, you want me to take cake, mush it up, put some buttercream in there, and then dip it in chocolate? That doesn't <laughs> sound good. And yeah. I, I would skip over it often, even though it was, like, 
recommended often and then yeah. now it's just even normal. now when i think about cake pops even like when i was making cake pops the other week mm-hmm. i was like uh this, these are just like so sweet there's just cake and icing now you're just gonna throw a bunch of candy melt on I top know, and my sister loves them too the fun <laughs> betty and the cake pops she <laughs> loves cake pops i will say if you use a really good dark quality sorry dark chocolate that's high quality yeah it does taste good yeah but how often are we doing that i know i feel like i'd also rather use like ganache or something to make the cake pop dough oh, rather than sure. just buttercream yeah but you use what you got on hand and rarely do i ever have extra ganache laying around that's true yeah <laughs> but yeah cake pops that's when they were born oh <laughs> <laughs> and then I remembered these. And I was like, when did these even start? I couldn't figure it out. I would say, again, it's in those t- that 2010 phase. I think so, too. Yeah, where the big giant cupcake just owned everything. Mm-hmm. I think it's so funny, too, how cupcakes were the mini version of a cake. Yeah. But then they just turned it back into the regular size yes. cake yes but now it looks like the cupcake and the idea of the pinata cake yeah that too like that's a big thing i haven't made a lot of pinata cakes i haven't either and to be honest i don't understand them i feel like it's just like i'm like you're taking away quite a significant amount of cake in the middle because uh-huh. if you don't you just end up with a little trickle of like sprinkles or yeah. whatever and, it's like, and then it's like that? yeah and then it's like okay now i've got sprinkles everywhere yeah. But are people really going to eat the amount of sprinkles that you would need to put inside of the cake no. with their cake? I think it was just like a fun kid's birthday thing where the kids go, wow, and then that's it. Yeah. Also. Ooh, I hope you have another trend in here. Do you have more? Yes. Okay. Because I feel more. like there is going to one that's going to come up that I'm going to also be like, that's a waste of time. Oh. We'll see. If- well, there is one that I just remembered from childhood yeah. that I didn't put in here. Okay. But it's so. Tell us big like i can't believe i forgot about this but the rainbow cake trend when people started dyeing cake yes yeah and do you remember seeing the tutorials where they dye all the colors and then they'd pour red and then they'd pour orange and then i yellow know until it was like Shh. i know and then i'd just be thinking why like it's <laughs> so much food dye yeah and it's such a and always i feel like until you nailed the oven temperature of your particular oven you're just going to end up with brownish, reddish cake. Well, only on top, right? When you cut into it, it's still pretty vibrant. But then you'd have to cut the sides, too. But you're going to ice it anyways. You can just see that small brown line. Yeah. But, like, nobody really cares. But I remember being a child and being at somebody's birthday party, and that was the first time I ever saw a rainbow cake, and I was amazed. I was really? blown away. Yeah. And I feel like... Maybe I've just become desensitized. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Because I remember being so amazed by that and i feel like after that is when i started to get into baking because i remember trying to make the rainbow cake many times before yeah not trying i was succeeding (laughs) my rainbow cakes were beautiful (laughs) but yeah wow i forgot all about that i also forgot to put rosette cakes in here how i don't know i just remember this morning but i mean you do have rosettes that are on a lot of these on things. a lot of things yeah <laughs> apparently 2008 was also the birth of the gender reveal cake interesting yeah because somebody had a cake that was filled with pink buttercream and she used that to be like surprise we're having a girl i've made a lot of gender reveal cakes uh-huh but i never had one never did the the cake as the Wait, gender really reveal. nope oh I did um, a box with the balloons coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And then... um, (laughs) What? Okay. And then my friend set up uh, my second gender reveal. Uh Uh-huh. Where she had me pop all the balloons. Yeah. And then I was like, there's nothing in here. And then it was a friend's themed uh, gender reveal. Yeah. And then the friend's theme song came on. Uh-huh. And then our friend started dancing. And then he whipped off his pants. <laughs> and then the color that was showing was the color of. <laughs> Why did they do it like that? because it was hilarious and it was such a surprise too yeah. because i we were so like set on popping the balloon so then after were you just like why are you dancing yeah and then they were like my friends were yelling like turn around turn around i was like what and i thought that i had like 
popped the balloon and then maybe the piece went flying behind me that would reveal what it was uh-huh. but no <laughs> instead just our friend taking his pants off oh! <laughs> that's so funny it was so fun oh my god i've also seen gender reveal cakes go severely wrong really yeah that's why i get nervous about the gender reveal cake what like they accidentally do the wrong color? Wrong color. That's one thing that I that as a baker you're terrified of like doing uh-huh. the wrong color. Um a color that's not obvious. So if it was like they wanted purple and then it went a little like bluish or something oh. like that, that also makes me worry. Uh-huh. Um also the slicing of it, if they don't slice it properly, it reveals it before the reveal is supposed to be done. Right. Um yeah. Wow, a lot of things can go wrong. Yeah, that just makes me a little nervous. But I still think they're fun. And if I wasn't a baker, I probably would have done something like that too. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't have much of an opinion on gender reveal cakes. Have you made made many? A couple. Um, I've mainly done them like at work and stuff too. Because a lot of people actually come in last minute. Sometimes day Mm -hmm. of and they're like, can I get some gender reveal cupcakes? And I'm like... You know what it is? People are so impatient. They can't just... (laughs) hold on to the secret and oh, then do it. I was going to say, are they just bad at planning? Or? No, I think it's they are like, <clears throat> they don't know what they're having. They get the ultrasound done. They go and they... Ah. Uh, yeah. We would always just like, for people who come in last minute, would just get either chocolate, vanilla, or red velvet cupcakes, like regular cupcakes, mm-hmm. and then we'd do pink or blue filling in the yes. cupcakes. And then white buttercream on top, pink and blue sprinkles. Yes. A classic. That too, I also feel is risky. With what? the cupcake one. From what I've seen of when people do those types of reveals, you have to eat a significant amount of cupcake. And most people don't think to just rip and show. It's yeah. always like <laughs> they're taking this massive bite and then they're like, whir, whir. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, oh, it, it's just, it just seems like that's not the best. Or gender reveal cake pops I've seen too. I was just going to say, I have done gender reveal cake pops before. And I remember being stressed about being able to see the cake through the bottom. Because you know how like you shake it off and then you wipe it a little bit? And you could see it through on some of them. But I was like, it's okay, I'm going to put them on wrappers. But then I only had pink wrappers. (laughs) Way to give it away, Alia. (laughs) (laughs) Well... It was fine. <laughs> like, nobody suspected anything, right? <laughs> I just added a little extra blue decoration to them to balance love it. it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, gender reveal stuff. They're also stressful sometimes. Yeah. Because if they've dyed the cake, let's say, instead, and then you're try- you have to do white buttercream on the outside and any little tiny crumb. Yeah. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. Um, I feel like I've also been seeing now it's a trend where they get a bunch of cupcakes and only one cupcake has the gender in it. Yes. So then it's like a game. Who gets It's like the balloons. But yeah. With cupcakes, too. Yeah. Which I guess is safer. I kind of thought that the idea of the gender reveal in general was going out though like it's not as popular yeah is that true uh i don't know if it's getting less popular well maybe it's not as like big and grand but i feel like a lot of people still do it yeah yeah i think so based on the amount of people who'd come in last minute yes that's true (laughs) um but yeah okay then we have cake trends of 2013 Mm -hmm. which i feel like is when a lot of like custom cakes started rising up a little bit yeah And being more... Accessible to more people. Yeah, and also being more of a thing that everybody wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently that's when the naked cake started, like, blowing up. Ah, the naked cake. Everybody wanted a naked cake for their wedding. (laughs) I've never liked the rustic trend. Like, in general, (laughs) I never... It's not my thing i've made a few rustic cakes that i'm like oh that was nice Mm -hmm. but it definitely wasn't my thing and i'm when i got married that was like very popular like everything Mm -hmm. was raffia and burlap and pastels and my wedding was like so different than that it was Uh very electric in color and i like making rustic cakes though because it's like eh, yeah it's basically like you've stopped yeah like it's like i'm gonna crumb coat and that's it 
Yeah. And then we're done. Or they like to have that messy ice. Not with like, you know, the, the line texture going yeah. up. But like messy as in like it's just all Palette. sludgy. Yeah. Yeah. On the mm-hmm. sides. And it's just like, oh, okay. So yeah. I don't have to like worry about it looking so perfect because it's just like, eh. Yeah. And then just slap some gold on there wherever. Yeah. <laughs> wherever needs it. And I used to think for the longest time, I was like, why would anybody pay me to do this? Yeah. Because I was like, you could literally do it yourself. But then when I started seeing the DIYs come out, I was like, oh, you can't. You can't? You can't do it yourself. Like the average person cannot achieve that. You know what I mean? Particular look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what ends up happening, and I, I just didn't think about this, but what ends up happening is you get weird rounded edges or things aren't actually as smooth as they need to be. Right. Because although it is messy iced and the look is supposed to look very rustic, some I you just you end up seeing like air bubbles or like things on the side and oh, the shape isn't right because they haven't leveled their cake off properly and stuff yeah. like that. And that is the thing with naked cakes. It's it's all out there. <laughs> it's all out there. Exactly. Yeah. So on the one hand, I know like a lot of people and customers and to be fair, me too, for the longest time looked at it like, why is it so expensive still? Why yeah. are you still charging me three hundred dollars? For this two-tiered cake and it's like well because it does actually take skill yeah because especially if your naked cake's not straight if it's leaning it's not gonna look very naked no you got to use the buttercream to, to level it. it out yeah yeah um yeah and then the boho trend the boho fan <laughs> the boho where did that fan. even come from i don't know like, did this come, did this start being trendy around the time that cactuses also became super trendy? No, I feel like after cacti. Mm-hmm. Cactuses. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I never got on board with this either. I didn't, I just thought. Like, um, I did what I was told. If yeah. someone said make that, then I did, but I never. When I let myself loose and it's like, make whatever you want, that never occurred to me. To oh, yeah. That. No. Because yeah. to me, it's just like a regular cake with some florals on it, but you just also added some paper and some other I, I also don't like that. The paper fan? Um, things in my cake that aren't edible. Oh. Yeah. I'm true. not a big fan of that. Yeah. And... Like, for, and also from, like, a cake decorating standpoint, like, just for me to explore and, and be creative, mm-hmm. I don't choose to put a lot of inedible things. Like, even toppers and things. Even though I think it does look good, yeah. I just never do it. Because hmm. I'm like, anybody can do it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But sometimes I do like it because it's easier. For sure. Like, like quicker, easier. Yeah. And if the customer cheaper. asks you, uh-huh. and yeah, you put it in. Yeah. But I just course. would never choose to. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, like, even, too, like, with, with florals and stuff, I never really try and make, like, sugar florals or, like, fondant florals or stuff like that because I'm like, well, who's going to eat it? True. No one. So I'm such a germaphobe that the idea of putting things into the cake oh, that really bothers me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care that much. <laughs> like, and that's why I do, like, wrap my florals in foil and all that stuff, but there's yeah. still bacteria on there. Yeah. That can get on the cake. Hmm. That's just the thought. Interesting. Okay. Now we jump to around 2016. Ah, yes. The crevice cakes. (laughs) The geode cakes. No, no, no. Some weird things happen when you do the wrong color geode. And (laughs) like when you do pink geodes, it sometimes can look really strange. Oh. Like, I've seen it look beautiful, uh-huh. but one wrong placement or one wrong kind of the way it looks, and it just looks bizarre. This one looks really pretty. <laughs> I, I do like the purple amethyst. I've never made one. Still. I know. <laughs> They're so fun to make. Oh, really? They're really, they really do fun, to, fun make. to make. Because this is the type of cake style that I feel, um, I feel helps me excel in my cake decorating abilities like you know there's certain trends where it's like oh i'm not good at that type of thing and Mm -hmm. so it just doesn't work out for you this is one of those ones that really works out for me because i am really good at placing things like whimsically Mm -hmm. so it's not perfect it's not super spaced and even and the thing that i struggle with is sometimes i'll get like a perfectly smooth cake but i'll accidentally like have one or two like little 
divots in there. Mm -hmm. So then this is great. You just drag it out and then it's like the natural imperfections that you have on your cake. You just dig it out and then you create like the geo. True. Yeah, they do. I've always thought that they look super fun. I've just never bothered to try it. And now you miss the boat. Yeah. Oh, well. (laughs) But that's not really like my style anyway. True. Like the style that I'm attracted to that I look at it and I'm like, I want to love that. that. Shiny gold. Yeah. It's cute though. And then we have the unicorn cake that has literally taken over the world. (laughs) I still think that the unicorn cake is beautiful. I like it. I'm just kind of over it. You probably made many, many, many unicorn cakes. Yeah, especially when they have like a full rainbow mane. I'm like, ugh. Okay, yeah. Not no. again. Three colors or you're out is yeah. my rule. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the rainbow, sorry, I think the unicorn cake was a great idea. Mm-hmm. And I think it sold the idea of unicorn without having to make like a fondant unicorn. Oh, yeah. For and sure. so I think it was a really smart cake decorating trend i think if i remember correctly it was started by a canadian baker oh really i think it was jenna ray cakes oh i think i didn't know that i might be wrong about that but (laughs) but also what was great about it too was that it created so many other trends like yes like basically (laughs) any 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 animal was transformed into that and i love the bunny take on it as yeah. well and i remember doing the reindeer one too oh really yeah yeah and even like now too like you can buy paper yes. unicorn toppers just put it right in <laughs> um yeah which i guess is also considered the lazy route <laughs> definitely but again there's it, there's different trends that serve different purposes yeah because this one makes it so that anybody can do exactly it. and i like i like that i mm. like that idea it is good um, but yeah, they literally took over the world mm-hmm. in about 2016. Then we jumped to 2018, which I feel is when Cakesicles started blowing up because everyone was just over cake pops yes. for some reason. Yes. <laughs> and fault line cakes too. And I feel like I might be wrong about this, but I feel like that's also when cake smashes became super trendy and everybody was doing it. Oh, I feel like cake smashes came before that. Before? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. So I just stuck it in. Yeah. Here. Cake smashes <laughs> definitely of the 2010s. Like that was pretty big. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just because that's around the time I started to decorate cakes. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Okay, um, let's talk about cakesicles first. I remember too, the first time I made a cakesicle was at your house because I never hopped on that trend. Yeah. And I remember the mold, or seeing the mold and being like, oh, these are a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be. It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. But they are cute. They're really cute. I love the look of them. Mm-hmm. I hate it. When there's fondant on them, though. Oh, yeah. Gross. So gross. Why would you want that? It looks great. I think it's just that it add, it gives you more space to work with. Yes. To make it look more fun. Though usually people just do that. I, I also think it does have more elegance than the ball. I True. Don't know. It just looks more modern. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. It's just new. Yeah. Yeah. Cake smash. I have feelings about cake smashes, too. Really? Having had two children that did cake smashes, it never works out the way you think. Uh Uh-huh. Like, you think that the child is going to make this gigantic mess and it's going to be so adorable. Yeah. But I guarantee that most of the pictures that are taken of, like, the kids looking all messy, it's because somebody, like, smeared it on them. Oh, probably. Because I I think if we gave it to a two-year-old then yes, you would get those like super messy, like smash cake looking things. But at one, they're still a little dumbfounded by the idea of cake, especially if you've kept them away from sugar for their whole lives. And that's the first time that you're going to give them refined sugar. Right. It's like, they, they, like I remember Aria just like touched it, like <laughs> touched the icing and Landon too, like touched the icing. Uh-huh. And then, and then he did put his, mouth on the cake but that was it he went that was it but there was no big (laughs) smash of the cake yeah i feel like there there usually isn't and then you end up wasting this entire cake cake. yeah and i i wonder too if like some people's cake smash goes wrong because they don't realize you have to leave the cake out 
It's, yes. Because it's a buttercream cake, right? You yeah. can't keep it in the fridge and then take it out and give it to the kid. I know. What's, what's very interesting is I think actually the lower quality of cake that you use and the lower quality of buttercream, and especially it, if you, they're using shortening, it's actually way better. You're going to come out with a better cake smash experience. Oh. Because using butter solidifies that buttercream a lot. True, And it has yeah. a lot of hold. Yeah. So you're not going to get this really like i'm assuming you want a messed up cake in the end so i would actually recommend if you're if if this is still a trend go to the grocery store and get your smash cake because <laughs> it's gonna be way better mm-hmm. and don't people usually because we were talking about how you throw out a whole cake don't people usually try and order smaller cakes for those now? they do they like do either like, a I made giant a, i made like a four inch yeah, yeah. yeah either a four inch or like a giant cupcake yeah something like that yeah but, you but know. even then, you're still pretty much going to waste three quarters of that cake yeah. because you're not going to allow your child to eat an entire four inch cake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> um, then we have the fault line trend. This one has strawberries in it, but I feel like the one I've seen the most is like sprinkles. Yes. In the middle. Yes. Love the look. Uh-huh. I think it looks really, really cool. Again, modern sleek but so much buttercream and so much sprinkles yeah if you are gonna roll it in sprinkles yeah i when this trend came out and i started seeing it i wasn't like amazed by it like i thought it was really cool but again it's not something that i was like oh i want to make that so bad yeah though i have made quite a few of those i (laughs) made them purely for the channel Because it wasn't a thing when I was actually, like, making a ton of orders. It Mm -hmm. was more, like, trending. And so I did it for that. Yeah. But that was the only reason. Mm -hmm. Never, never, ever would I opt to make a fault line cake. Like, sometimes when people come to me and they're like, oh, Ashley, like, are you available to make a cake for this or whatever? And they're like, you can choose whatever you want to make. I would never choose a fault line cake. Mm -hmm. Because when these things start trending... Like, it always makes me wonder, who is this trend for? Is it for, like, your typical home baker? Or is it for people who are more skilled in cake decorating and do a lot of custom cakes? Or is it, like, This can't know. be for the typical home baker. Because, because of the sheer volume of buttercream that you need, most people don't prepare butter, that amount for... Okay, let me put it this way. Yeah. Is it... A Wilton trend. Because you know how Wilton's yes, like... definitely not a Wilton trend. That one? No. Because you Unicorn know how, cake? Yes. Yeah. Because you know how Wilton's like a level where it's like simple enough that like everyone can do yes. it? Yes. I wouldn't say that. Like this is tricky. Because mm. you've got to keep things ultra smooth and if you don't, it doesn't look good. I feel like when it looks like this too, it is meant to be more for like an advanced cake decorator. Yes. But when it is one that's just like sprinkles... sprinkles. That's when it looks more like, oh, this is just, you know. Yeah. A thing going around that yeah. all the bakers are doing nowadays. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I never had super strong feelings about it. Mm-hmm. But I do enjoy it from time to time. Okay, so now we're in like just the past mm. couple years. Mm-hmm. I just bunched 2021 to 2023 Kay. together. We have the comic book cake trend, which took over the internet for yes. like a hot minute. So the, the trend was so fast that when I was planning a video to make the the trend, it passed oh. while I was planning it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, forget it. So I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I think it is um, so inventive. I love that we can actually give credit where credit is due to that person because it was very obvious. I, unfor- I'm so sorry. I don't remember who exactly started it now, but I do remember it being very obvious that uh-huh. they were the one that started it. At this point, too, I just kind of gave up on finding who started what trend. Yes, and I was just like, yes. what's been trending for the past few years? So, and and I, I think it's really cool. It really reminds me um, of It's All the Boys I Loved Before, part four. I, I think it is. Seen or part it. three. Part three. Whichever one. I've only seen like the first one. Okay. Well, they go to Korea and they go to this cafe and it's like all cartoony like that. Oh, fun. Yeah. So it really reminds me of that whenever I, I see that. Uh-huh. Part of the reason why it took me so long to jump on the trend, to try out the trend, is because 
it's a lot of work for minimal payoff, I want to say. Like, the concept is cool, but unless I'm specifically looking for that concept, I'm not going to make it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I saw this one, too, again, it was another one of those trends where I was like, oh, that's really cool. I don't have any desire to make it, though. Yeah. Like, maybe one day. Because you really do have to to be very precise with your piping Mm -hmm. to make sure that it looks cartoony. Yeah. And and if you're not doing that and you're doing it with fondant, oh my, like rolling all of that really thin fondant. And it's really only from like the front angle where you're going to get the cool exactly. look. Exactly. Like you have to be so specific with it. And I've seen mm-hmm. it done in like macarons now and all these other oh, treats. Cool. Yeah. It looks cool and I'm still like, that's cool. But I just don't feel motivated to make it. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, the vintage cake though is the one where I'm like, I want to make that. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that is stunning. Give it to me. (laughs) So I have feelings about this cake too. I, again, I think this is one of those types of cakes that does play to my strengths. Piping is something that I'm, I'm really strong at now. But it gives me the same vibes, which you did not include, which you should have. Of the star tipped cakes, where it was like Ew, all star tipped. I and, forgot about those. Yeah, and so these vintage cakes <clears throat> give me a little feel of that. Do not compare these stunning, <laughs> elegant, gorgeous vintage cakes to those horrible, nightmarish star piped Elmo cakes. <laughs> so. It just gives me a touch of that. It's not, it's obviously not as bad as that. But like, that's kind of how I feel. These are good. I also <laughs> feel like the it can go really wrong. Like if you choose the wrong tip and you choose to do the wrong thing, then it can look really bizarre. True. But I do, like that one, gorgeous. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, very beautiful. But it just doesn't, it doesn't give me a spark. Hmm. Like, again, it's not one of those things that I'd be like, I'm going to make a ton of those. You know? I want to make a ton of those. I understand. <laughs> I feel like, to me, it's just so, like, pretty to look at. I feel like if you were running your own bakery, you would make, like, the vintage cake one of your signature cakes. Totally. Or you just have, like, a cabinet full of them. Yeah. I love it. I think it's stunning and gorgeous and beautiful. <laughs> I could never get on board with the side cake. Oh, really? Like, it's fine. But... For me, it's like a lot of structural integrity that needs to take place Mm -hmm. for, again, little payoff. Right. I feel like it's... I feel like there's a lot of concerns, again, with, like, the the structure Mm -hmm. part of it, too. Because it's like, well, what kind of filling does it have? Mm -hmm. Is it like... Like, I go for ganache every time. Yeah. Is it it ganache or buttercream? Or is it, like, strawberry jelly? Yeah. That's going to go everywhere. Well, you would have to say no. Mm. Like, you can't. Yeah, because there's really no way to, like, hold it together, right? No. And then the other side of me is like, well, I guess you could do that, but then you would just cut it this way. Uh Uh-huh. And then it's just like... I like this trend, though. You're also losing a serving. True. Um, I like this trend, though. Not with, like, this particular look, but Uh I see a lot of these cakes where the cake's on their side, but then it's decorated really, like, artsy-like with buttercream. I don't know if, like, you've seen those pictures, but I'll pull up one quickly. Because I have so many saved on my Pinterest board. (laughs) Because I want to make ones. Okay, yeah, yeah, really pretty. I love that. Because the other thing that I think you might have missed is a palette knife buttercream. Oh, true. Wow, there's a lot I forgot. But, like, this is what I mean. Mm-hmm. I love that. I like, I just like this style. Yeah. Where it looks very artistic. I like it. Again, it's not something I gravitate towards. Hmm. Like, not something I, like, I need to make that. I feel like that is what I gravitate towards. But yes. I don't make it that often. Yeah. I should. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. So then the next slide of the past few years. Bento box cakes. I feel like these, this is all I see nowadays on the internet. The super minimalist. Or the bento, which is still pretty, like, simple. Yeah. It's just smaller and it's in a box. Yeah. Or the heart cake. Yeah. Which I also don't, like... (laughs) Like, I guess I just don't like the overall... And 
here's the thing. I, I've definitely done like bento box cake tutorials and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Again, it's not that I think any of these things are horrible. They're just not my favorite. Uh-huh. And I feel like the idea of the bento box cake is, okay, bento boxes at its core is supposed to be about expediency, having an expedient meal mm-hmm. and something small and tasty. Yeah. So the idea of the bento box cake, it's like even just to get all of the cakes baked, I don't have like that large of an array of that size of cake pan. Yeah. And and I feel like it doesn't lend well for the average at-home baker. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like it makes sense for bakeries if they wanted to like output a bento box cake. But again, a lot of these are very detailed. Uh And it's on, like, this small little thing. And I hate when things are just flat designs that are detailed. Hmm. I feel like with this, it's more trendy because it's more, like, the customer who loves it. It's, like, a small little custom cake. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, super cute and easy to take with you wherever and, like, present to someone on their birthday. I guess so. You know. Yeah. From the, to someone on their birthday. From the bakery sense. standpoint, it's like, yeah, it's like it's like a full size cake, but it's just smaller. Yeah. So you're gonna make less money on it. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, like and with baking too, you if you don't have like the small pans, you'd have to bake a giant sheet and then, and then cut, cut them. Out. Which is such a waste. I know. Yeah. But now you can make your cake skulls. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> I like the heart shaped cake. I feel like those were trendy too back in like the nineties. Mm-hmm. There was heart shaped cakes. But now they're just really blowing up. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like them too. I think they're cute. They're cute. Uh, how do you feel about the super minimalist where it's literally like nothing except buttercream writing on top? (laughs) I hate it. Uh, Only because it just feels grocery store. Like go to the grocery store then and get Mm. them to do that for you. Or just get your home baker friend. Or just at this point, just don't even bother. (laughs) (laughs) But I've been seeing them so much. Like especially with like the the star signs written on top like have you ever seen the yes. scorpio baby uh-huh that made it. where did that come from i don't know did a celebrity do it maybe i feel like that's what happened but i'm just like if you're gonna go that simple just eat a slice of cake and call it a day <laughs> like that's how i feel nice <laughs> Okay, the last slide is two trends that I forgot. No, there's two more slides. Okay, okay. the last two slides are things oh, that I forgot you. about until the end. <laughs> and then I was like, where do you so, put these? You know, I love a good number cake. I love a good number and letter cake. And the reason is because, A, it conveys your message very easily. Mm-hmm. B, now that they're so trendy and there's so many molds for them, like if you don't want to sit there carving the cake, there's options for you. Mm. Or you can just carve the cake. I also love that it can serve a lot of people at once. Yep. But above all, I love that I think it's one of the tastiest options you've shown me. It's oh. not slathered in buttercream. Yeah. You can put really delicious fillings inside and it can be topped with really delicious things. And I love that it can be a color trend with lots of different items on there. I think you're the first person to say that you love these cakes. I do. Because I feel like everywhere I've worked, it's been, ugh, we hate them. We don't do them here. Or it's been, yeah, we offer them, but they're such a pain to make. I think it's because I've seen some really, really well done ones Mm -hmm. where you can still do the fondant figures and have really beautiful things on there, Mm -hmm. but it just looks really nice. Or you can go simple and put florals on it or chocolates or whatever. But like even the style of design where it's just a bunch of stuff piled on it. Yeah. What is that called? And where did it come from? And when did it start? I don't know. I feel like I've just been seeing this in like the past three, four years. Yeah, maybe. I love it. It's it's really nice. It looks looking. full. I, love I just it. never know what it's called. My my video that has twenty million views on it is featuring a cake like that. Oh, like that? Yeah. Wow. And yeah. and I just think it just looks beautiful. And I get lots of comments on that video, mm-hmm. even though I think I've made prettier cakes. Mm-hmm. That one is like everyone is drawn to it because they think it's so perfect it's so and and the color is really what carries the cake right it is really pretty and people do it with cupcakes now too like i don't like that as much Uh, when they do it as a pull apart cupcake cake yeah Yeah. because like you mentioned there's so much more Mm buttercream on it 
Okay, and then <laughs> I also forgot about stripe cakes. How could you? And the sprinkle drip cake. I I like both of them. Mm-hmm. I like both those trends. I think they're they're still more special than like mm-hmm. a grocery store cake, but it is more. Um, again, it's not this overkill of buttercream and chocolate and all of that. I like both too. And when I did see these trends, these were like stuff that I wanted to try. Yes. I just don't like doing the drips, the sprinkle drips, like placing every sprinkle drips are a pain. Yeah. But drips are totally fine. Oh yeah. Yeah. Drips, regular drips are fine. The sprinkle drip looks stunning, but to like have to put every single sprinkle on takes like 10 years. (laughs) Yeah. That, that does take a long time. And I think it's deceptive because you would think it would be cheaper to have a drip cake, but when you have to place the sprinkles on like that, mm-hmm. although these ones look a little bit done a little bit differently, almost like smushed in. <laughs> and so, what is your favorite cake trend of all time? Could be something that's like long gone that you're like, I want that to come back. I just feel like it's the vintage cake. Yes, that's because that's favorite. what I'm so into right now. I think my favorite cake trend is something fully done in fondant like really yeah ew and again (laughs) i know i've been talking about taste and all that stuff but yeah when it comes to like cake decorating and what i want to decorate it's something fully fully done in fondant that looks inedible what is your least favorite then to make (sighs) to make yeah i really hate it when when it's um make me everything depicting my childhood through my adulthood and Ah, stick it on the cake. Like the favorite things, cakes. Things Mm. that are not cohesive are a problem for me. So I feel like most cake trends are totally fine because it has a cohesive look to it. But as soon as you start doing that, I'm like, no. Even with the favorite things trend, now some people will just print out images of what they like and and stick them onto the cake. I know, because I feel like that looks even worse. It looks even worse. <laughs> and I just said how I hate it when there are inedible things on the cake. What if it's edible paper? Slightly better, but like, what are you doing to that image <laughs> to make it look good? Nothing. Yeah, throw it in the garbage. I feel like my least favorite to make has always been rosette cakes. Oh, I love rosette cakes. I hate them. I oh. hate them. They're so ugly every I, time. I think they're pretty. Every time I make one, I'm like, oh, this is kind of pretty until I like... Finish? Yeah. And then I'm like, Ew, what is this? <laughs> See, I worked during the era of the rosette cake, so uh. I made a mini a rosette cake. But like, even when I do it properly, which like I always do... <laughs> And it, like, looks nice. It looks how it's supposed to. I'm still like, eh. But, like, why'd you choose that? It's mm-hmm. so ugly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for preparing that very, very nice presentation. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> I love a good presentation. PowerPoints, whatever. They're all yep. good to me. And, yeah, did it take you down memory lane? It did. I Especially would have liked to see a star tipped cake, but that one really nailed it. I feel like this one in particular, all these, like, 2000s cake they remind me of like when i was a kid and like i just had so much more wonder they remind me of the struggle of trying to achieve it just reminds me of like when i first downloaded pinterest and i was like exploring so many hobbies and i was like oh my god these are so cool yes and i was like seeing cakes like this and i thought they were like the coolest thing in the world Mm -hmm. but i never thought that i would ever be making them (laughs) <laughs> or eating them true true but yeah what a journey that was it was a journey let us know down in the comments below what was your favorite and least favorite cake trend be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this podcast and subscribe if you haven't already we really appreciate it bye